Okay, guys, welcome back. Today we are going to talk about Amperex tubes. No, actually, notice this. My other hobby, other than audiophile, is participating in uh, strongman competitions, if you haven't noticed how swole I am. Um, so I'm training to beat the mountain by lifting subwoofers all day. <laughs> anyway, let's get serious. Last video was vibration control. This one's going to be vibration control. Probably the last 10 were vibration control. Still testing some stuff. I did some audible testing of what we did last time on the Vandersteen, and I didn't really notice anything for most uh, of my songs. And until I played something really loud and on a few tracks did I notice anything that was a little bit I could perceive as an improvement. Uh, in particular one track and I'll do a video. You're gonna to want to subscribe. I'll do a video of all the test tracks I go through I'm, It's almost like 200 tracks uh, But especially when testing bass, I have some specific ones and it was the reverberation of a drum That I noticed a lot more not a lot more but at least some more detail of almost each waiver of this huge drum that was struck uh, that seemed a little bit more pronounced and detailed in the past again not a huge difference and on most tracks like i said i didn't hear anything that's mind-boggling different but one thing i did notice is that the when i played bass tracks that were maybe exciting room modes or vibrating from the floor vibrations vibrating other things i did notice in that corner something that was vibrating before wasn't vibrating um, so eliminating some of the floorboard vibration that not the vibrations going into the floor from the sub um, Even a small amount can make a difference Again, it can all change if you crank the volume up much higher and override anything you've done uh, Certainly that can uh, negate the benefits you had but you saw the dramatic differences if you watched the previous videos how much these squash ball solutions can do with the vibrations that are pretty significant, four pound weights being dropped. So anyway, I heard enough with the audible test and I saw enough with the measurements and other anecdotal stuff to go ahead in time to do it on my other sub, which is an SVS sub. Let me, I'll show you more of it when I can flip the camera. Anyway, um, it's on an RLX subdued to help prevent vibrations. So what I'm gonna do is play a test tone with the sub on the RLX. We're gonna do the drop test, kind of like what we did with the, the Vandersteen, and see what the baseline is with this level of vibration control uh, and the sub playing a test tone to see how much the sub is actually vibrating and how much it's sending into the floor. And then we'll swap out the RLX subdued with um, the same solution or something similar. I don't have enough balls to do it again uh, for this sub exactly the same. I actually have enough balls. I don't have the other things I need to uh, replicate it identically to the previous video on the Vandersteen. So I'll do something different, but I think we're going to see similar results, but let's see. So let me pause this while I play a test tone and we get a baseline. Okay, I'm playing roughly a 75 dB tone from my listening position through this sub. It's the uh, SVS sealed box, I think 3000 or whatever it is. Um, really good sub, although I don't like using the crossover in it, just strictly as a uh, home theater sub um, and a sealed box sub, it's pretty good. Otherwise, don't use the crossover. In any case, getting off topic here. So let's get back on topic. As you can see with this sub, because the driver is firing, side firing driver, you will see X axis versus uh, on the Vanderseen stub with three eight inch drivers firing down, we had Z axis vibrations more significant. So this is pretty consistent with what we saw flip from the Vanderseen with almost no vibration control other than, in this case, we do have the RLX at the bottom. But let's see when I put the, let's see what happens in terms of floorborne vibrations right near the sensor. You 
see both X and Z axis, not too much on the Y. But let's also do the four pound drop test. Let me keep this pretty much, apologize for the Again, you're seeing, like we've seen in other tests, very significant and dramatic vibrations being registered from the floor. Let me go ahead and put it on pause, swap out the RLX subdued with my stand uh, using the squash balls and see if we can get some improvement. Okay guys, we're back and I'm running a test tone right now again through the sub, same as before. We're a few days later because I had to get some more balls, but I still don't have enough to equal what I have on the Vandersen sub. But it's enough to test and you can see a little bit of an improvement in terms of with the test tone. Kind of like what we saw with the Vandersteen but in reverse. The Vandersteen had more on the Z axis which is up and down because the drivers are up and down firing down. Uh, here because it fires out from the side you're going to see more from the x-axis but you have kind of maybe these peaks of impulse but maybe more divots of less ringing in between so let's just see what happens when we put this on the floor next to it So basically you see a nice improvement in terms of almost nothing going into the floor. Just a little bit on that z-axis on the floor. Let me do the drop test with the, um, it's on the balls and it's going to now have the test tone and the drop test at the same time. Let's see if we see some of the same things we saw before. So you're not seeing much at all on the X or Y axis. So again, this we could do this all day. In terms of dramatic improvements, we're not seeing a lot with the, just the test tone playing. It is minor, but again, when we're talking about drivers that are moving very minor amounts to create sound, a little bit can go a long ways. In terms of drop tests, significant vibrations and vibrations going into the uh, floor, we are seeing a nice improvement there. So both subs have benefited from that. And like I said, cumulatively, when you do your subs and your main speakers, then like over here with the seismic bars, cumulatively you can get rid of all of the vibrations almost going into your floor, which you know reduces things that are excited in the room and some other advantages that I've mentioned in previous videos so while I'm over here let me give you a temptation for future videos that's my server it's about 70 pounds cool looking but is it worth the money you'll have to stay tuned to find out anyway if you enjoyed this video feel free to subscribe sign up for notifications and we'll see you soon with more fun stuff